And I remember that that was a, the occasion of Fiji becoming a republic was one of the rare occasions when the Queen made a statement of her own volition in which she lamented the fact that the Fijian people had not been asked to, for their position on this. When you're in Fiji, you will no doubt possibly interview General Rambuka. Will you be suggesting to him that perhaps rather than apologising to the Queen as he did, the correct thing to do would be to now run a referendum on the issue? Well, the only thing about them, they're big guys, these Fijians. <laughs> I mean, whether I suggest that, you know, they, I, as you guys have just realised, it's it's not easy playing rugby against them. So uh, I'll probably just keep my head down, to be honest, when we get to Fiji, because, and, and try to survive drinking the kava. I think that'll probably just about be my limit. But, look, yeah, it's an important issue because, of course, the, the, the Queen took all these things incredibly serious and, mm. um, seriously. She's very, I mean, the most important thing I think that I would stress to anybody that has any views on changing systems and sweeping systems is to read as widely as possible. And it's great that it's 200 years for that, um, as that legislative, that, that, you know, the, for the New South Wales Parliament. Doesn't that show you something that, that, that how? Australia has developed um, over the years whilst embracing a system that has worked well for Australians. Um, and it's a system that's based upon, um, with its own tweaks, um, the British system, which of course had to come out of its own republic, I mean, you know, the interregnum of Oliver Cromwell. So they've learned a lot over the years. And I think that, that the fact that it's 200 years old is something that should be celebrated um, in in a way that we should, you know, we really should be sorry because it shows uh, that democracy has functioned well and and developed over that those two centuries. Well, uh, and in relation to Fiji, there was an extraordinary link. And I've noticed it myself when I've been there. Extraordinary link and respect and love for the royal mm. family, and I hope it's continuing now. It'll be interesting to see what happens when Charles goes there, whether the same love continues, the same relationship continues between the, the people and uh, and the royal family? Oh, I think they will be. I mean, I remember also being in other Pacific... I mean, I went with him to Vanuatu and, um, and Tonga with William and... Oh, sorry, Harry and, and Meghan. It, it was incredible. But I remember flying back on the... And I think it was the Prime Minister of Australia's jet and that's where I had a good long conversation with the King. I was invited invited to the front. Julia Bishop was on that, was Foreign Minister at the time. There was only a few of us on the plane. And that's when um, I really benefited from um, having, I didn't read one of these books, but I read one of these books about his views. And it was very interesting because you can have a very meaningful conversation having... Um, listen to hours of him reading this book out. You know, um, and it was interesting getting his take on many, many things, um, and including, I think, I said, I, I did like his his sense of humour when he, he cracked a joke about, um, uh, he, in one of his speeches, he spoke about wearing budgie smugglers, you know, to this Australian <laughs> got quite a laugh, a laugh from it. Um, but then he said to me, yeah, I remember he says, but I've never owned a pair of budgie smugglers in my life, <laughs> which I thought it was just the way he delivered it, maybe very, it just made me chuckle myself. But uh, we should always remember that, you know, this is a man that was raised on the goons. And although he comes across as very serious and, and, um, and he cares deeply about what he does, he is a human being and he has a very he, he, slightly eccentric sense of humour. Um, but he is a very funny man, too. 